2017 at 3 p.m. Uh, the following items. Uh, first, we would like to uh, approve the minutes of the August 16th and September 16th, 2000, uh, September 6, 2007 meeting, um, 2017 meeting, excuse me. Um, do I have a motion to approve those minutes? Motion to I'll second the motion. Uh, the minutes of those meetings are approved. The uh, next item would be the application submitted for consideration. Uh, item number one, uh, Uno Restaurant, LLC, DBA Uno Chicago Grill, 210 Squire Road, Joshua Wallace, manager. This is an application for transfer of stock. Uh, the application of Uno Restaurants, LLC, Joshua Wallace, manager for a transfer of stock to a change of ownership of the parent company. Is there uh, someone speaking on behalf? of UNO's LLC. I do not see anyone. Do we want to vote on this? Would you we like to? Hold it till the end of the meeting. OK, it's we'll hold it. Very good. We'll table this till the end of the meeting. Item number two uh, is 99 West LLC, DBA 99 Restaurant and Pub, 121 VFW Parkway, Tanya Susi, manager. Uh, this is an application for a change of officers and directors. Yes, sir, your name and address for the record, please. Good afternoon. My name is Joe Devlin. I'm trying to get the office at the Newburyport. Thank you, sir. I'm an attorney with offices in Newburyport and uh, Boston, and I represent uh, 99 West LLC. If it pleases the chair, I can summarize the application in front of you. I beg your pardon? If it pleases you, I can su uh, summarize the application yes, in front do. of you. Thank um, you. It's a change of officer. There's two officers leaving, Hazem Oof and Anita Adams, being replaced by two officers, uh, Charlie Noyes and Gregory Hayes. There's 64 locations in Massachusetts, around 200 in about 20 different states. Um, so the ABCC allows us to go to them first with something called the inverted process, approval process. So they have vetted these two gentlemen. Then they send the letter down to you that, that, that they have done so. Um, I had my hearing in Boston this morning, and this one I think I got one left, and then uh, we're done. So um, nothing's changing in the operations. The manager's not changing. Nothing about the location is changing. So unless you're in the audience or watching on TV, you won't know that anything has happened. Okay, very good. Do any of the commissioners have any questions at this time? I have no questions. I have no questions. Uh, do I have a motion on this? I'll make a motion. Second the motion. Uh, it's unanimous. The motion to approve uh, a change of offices for 99 West LLC, 121 VFW Parkway has been approved. Thank you very much. Sir. Thank you very much. Item number three, the Joseph Leon Matola Post, 4524 VFW US Inc. 61 Lucia Avenue, John Joseph Ross, manager. This is an application for a change of officers and directors for an all alcohol club license. The application of Joseph Matola Post for a change of officers and directors is continued from the August meeting. Uh, yes, sir, your name and address for the record, please. John Joseph Ross, 1 Revere Beach Boulevard, Revere Mass. Very good. Will you tell us what? Uh, is going on here? We just changed offices. We're finally getting some young guys up there. That's Very good. Uh, is there any, any changes to the club beyond the change of offices? Not really. It's uh, we're doing some work. We got the permits and everything, and that's about it. Uh, we're just you know trying to get used to the Casa Lucia and with along with the VFW up there. Okay, very good. Do uh, any of the commissioners have any questions? I have no questions, just the comments. It's a great job up there. I did have the, the chance to go. I did have the chance to stop by and look at what you people have done, and it looks great. Yeah, Thanks it's coming lot. along. A lot of work up there and everything like that. Not like the old place was falling apart, <laughs> but uh, if they like today, we would be leaking like crazy. You're doing a great job. In the I last time, I didn't get the letter. We didn't, uh, it went to the old place, and uh, that's why we didn't show up the last time. Okay. But I appreciate you seeing me. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I'll close that portion of the meeting. Are there any other proponents? 
Seeing and hearing none, I will close that. Are there any opponents? Seeing and hearing none, I will close that. Do I have a motion? Motion to approve. A second motion. Uh, the motion is granted. The motion to approve the uh, change of officers and directors of the application for Joseph Leon McCormick Post 4524 VFW US Inc. has been approved. Okay, thank, thank you very, very much. much. At this um, time, before before we... Um, you want to take this one first? Yes. <laughs> um, this is uh, an item um, from the Shirley Ave Business Association. Is there someone? Neighborhood? Neighborhood developers? Yes. Thank you. Sorry <laughs> about that. That's okay. And this is an application for a one-day common victuals license. Yep. And what day would you like that license? Uh, we're looking for October 14th from 3 to 7 p.m. Um, we have a rain date for October 21st. Does that make sense to put on the application? Okay. Um, do you, and what are you planning to do at this um, event? So we are hosting our fifth um, annual Shirley Ave Cultural Festival. This event is an event to honor or celebrate the neighborhood diversity, and it's co-sponsored by the City of Revere plus Councilor Ira Novoselsky, including us, the neighborhood developers. Very good. And how many uh, vendor, food vendors do you plan on having? We are hoping to have a, a little less than five vendors. Um, we have... Uh, we're hoping to work with the vendors from um, the Revere Farmers Market as well as a, an outside vendor. Okay, do you have any questions? Um, would you, are you going to be cooking there? Is this food going to be prepared right on, on Shirley Ave? The food should already be prepped. Okay, so would, the, would there be any need to have a, an approval by the fire department if you're setting up any kind of... Um, Barbecue pits or, or smokers or no barbecue pits or smokers. No, it's going to be all prepared. Vendors are going to bring it cooked. Yes. Okay. Thank you. So, how many people do you expect? In the past, you've had how many at this event? Uh, so we're expecting about two hundred and fifty this year. Are you blocking down any streets? We are um, blocking a small portion of Nahant. Um, it's. So the location of the event is going to take place at the municipal lot. I want to say 139 Shirley Avenue, but the municipal lot right in Shirley Avenue. Um, and off to the side, uh, Nahant will be closing a portion of Nahant Street. So there'll, there'll be detail there or no? Yes. There'll so we have also um, support from the Revere Police Department who will be arranging for um, officers at the main point of entrance. Uh, Shirley Ave will not be closed. Yeah. And it's no, not an alcohol event, correct? No alcohol. Okay. okay, thank you. Thank you. Are there any other uh, questions? Any uh, other do questions? I have a motion here? I have okay. a motion. They, I know they've done this um, in the past and it's worked out great. There's never been a problem, so I would make a motion to approve. And I would uh, also maybe we'd make a, a, a note that should you need the rain date that that... Um, Approval will continue over to what was the date again? The twenty first. Would be October twenty first. October twenty first. So should there be a rain date, this will also apply to October twenty first. Well, I'll second the motion. Uh, the motion will carry. Uh, Thank you. This is a, an approval of a one day common victualist license for the Shirley Ave Neighborhood Association to be granted on October fourteenth from three. I'm sorry, the time again? Uh, it's 3 to 7 p.m., and it's the neighborhood developers, not the Shirley Ave Business Association. We keep 3 to 7. Three to it's seven. only four hours. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that will be on October 14th from 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. with a rain date on October 21st for the same time? Yes. For the same time, 3 to 7 p.m. Thank you. Thank you. The uh, last item uh, before we get to the hearing would be a um, notice into the unlicensed operation of the commercial parking business at 195 VFW Parkway. Uh, that matter has been continued to the October meeting. Um, there is a lot of activity and hopefully by then we will 
have something sorted out. Well, I understand, um, I, I think I, I just got an email this morning, that 90% uh, of the cars have been moved and a special permit is being granted by the city council and therefore does not need a license commission approval. That's correct. If that happens, that'll be great and hopefully they'll pay. Um, well, if you want, we can leave it, still leave it on the agenda should yes, something I change. Think, I think we should leave it on okay. the agenda. Is that okay, uh, Commissioner? Fine, so that'll, that'll go forward as it, as it is. Um, we have some communications. Um, a notification from the Massachusetts Alcohol Beverage Control Commission disapproving license transfer application for Maury Patel DBA, the Breadbasket Discount Store, 535 Broadway. We also have notification from the Massachusetts Alcohol Beverage Control Commission approving a new license application for Hook and Reel LLC DBA Hook and Reel at 151A VFW Parkway. There is also a notification from the Alcohol uh, Beverage Control Commission of a return of no action for Jimison Enterprises. However, a light communication from the Alcohol Beverage Control Commission has changed that, and there is approving a new license application for Jimison uh, LLC DBA Larry J's Barbecue Cafe at 148-1148-1150 North Shore Road. And and lastly, there is a late communication from the Massachusetts Alcohol Beverage Com Control Commission of a return of no action for Lazy Crab LLC, 733 Broadway, Unit 1. That's the end of the communications. The next uh, item on the agenda would be a, uh, a hearing for Shuban Inc., DBA Parkway Convenience. This would be a, um, a hearing uh, concerning police report of selling alcohol to an underage person during, during a compliance check, and this is noted to be the second offense. Uh, speaking on behalf of the Revere Police Department, and would tell us something about what, what occurred, uh, would be Lieutenant Maley. Yes. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon. My name is Lieutenant Glenn Maley. I've been with the uh, Revere Police Department about 23 years. Uh, I've been doing these compliance checks for about, about 10 years off and on. Uh, myself and Lieutenant Randall uh, and a 17-year-old, I believe, underage operative, we're doing a, uh, a group of about 20 compliance checks of the uh, city's liquor stores that night. I think it was August 25th. Uh, the first stop was the convenience store, uh, pro, uh, Parkway Convenience. I believe it was 190 uh, Revere Beach Parkway. And uh, we sent the uh, underage operative in with instructions to buy a 12-pack of Bud Light with a $20 bill, whose serial numbers were recorded. And uh, he immediately came out five minutes later with the, uh, with the 12 pack in his hands. He had uh, no issue buying it whatsoever. Uh, in my experience since I've been doing this, this is probably the second time that uh, this particular establishment has violated. Thank you, Lieutenant. Was your... Um... I do have a police report. If you'd like me to read verbatim from it, I just gave you a brief synopsis. It's pretty much short anyways. I think, uh, I mean, I have a copy of the police report. Yes, I, I figured probably. Thank did. you. Um, I'm curious, was there, was there an ID asked for, or was there any type of identification asked for at all? I believe ID was not asked for. Was there a machine on the counter to check I the I don't ID? believe there was any type of machinery there, no. I believe they did have one when I went in, and um, they should be using it. If they did, I didn't and see they it. And they didn't attempt to use that. He, they, he didn't even ask for an ID. He doesn't have an ID. So he's instructed, if he's asked for an ID, the under it operative just to leave the store. So he was able to buy the liquor and just walked out with it. So. Have, have you received any other uh, complaints about this uh, establishment beyond the two offenses that are on record? No, no. And uh, just, uh, just to add, out of all 20 establishment, that particular night, that was the only violation. Well, that's good. It is good. <laughs> I agree. Very, that's very good for the city. Um. Are there any uh, questions, John? Do you have any questions? So, so the, you know, this miner that you used, sorry. The, the miner that you used for this um, this, this operation was was was, it was someone was a male, correct? Yes. Yeah. Was he dressed any particular way? Did he wear a hood? Did he have a beard? I, I just no. Just, he's very young looking, actually. He, he was young looking. Okay, yes, so you could clearly see he was oh, definitely questionable, 21 at best. Right. Okay. Right. Thank you. 
What time of the evening was this? This was, uh, was our first stop, so it was probably right around 6 o'clock, give or take a few minutes. So it was, it was daylight. It was daylight. Okay, and how were they when you approached them? Did you go in and approach them and tell yes, them Yes, myself they... and the other lieutenant did, and he was cooperative. He, just, he seemed to be busy. You know, we approached him, he was cooperative. He, he didn't give us a hard time or anything. Didn't uh, try to deny it or... Uh, no, he seemed that... a little surprised, if anything. But uh, again, he didn't give us an argument or anything. Okay, and that manager, I assume, is not here today that you dealt um, with? I don't see him. I don't really remember, to tell you the truth. It's been a while, been a, been a month, so I mean, I, I, uh, it was quick, so. <laughs> right. Okay, thank right. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lieutenant. Uh, someone from um, Shoe Barn Inc.? Yes. Your name and address for the my, my name is Greg DeMarcus. I'm a lawyer with offices at 56 Central Avenue in Lynn. And uh, a couple things before I get going. Um, we have no issue with anything uh, that you just heard uh, with regard to the report and the incident. The clerk who did sell the alcoholic beverage is here today. His name is Roger Skoma. And um, the manager is not. We called in uh, on Monday to tell you that she's out of town. Um, but we were told um, I have the owner here and I have the clerk here. So uh, to answer your question, uh, th th there's, no, there's no excuse. These are, these are the most difficult hearings for me to go to. There's no excuse. And, and uh, uh, to say it was poor judgment is an understatement. Uh, it's the second time in a year and a half. Um, the first uh, clerk uh, a year and a half ago was discharged. Um, all I can tell you is there's three employees, the manager and two other employees, and I have both employees here today. They're TIP certified. All, all employees are TIP certified. And they've established a new policy. And they do have a scanner machine, by the way. I know they do, and I, I guess that's what surprises me. Right. I mean, it's, when we issued this license, they said they would put that machine in and they would use it. Regardless of how old they looked, they would use it. So. I, I, I'm a little confused as well, to why that evening it wasn't used. The, and, and they do have it, and, and you know, I, I, I can't answer that question any more than you can, but they do have a scanner machine. Yes. I, I thought you would say <laughs> that, they, that they did not, but they do. Um, so they've established a new policy, and I told them they just can't, they can't deviate from this policy. Uh, the, uh, they're going to put signs up there that if you look under 40, they're going to card you. Uh, and if you upset customers, you upset customers. Let them go someplace else. Um, I think the only ones you'll end up upsetting are the underage customers, but it's so be it. Um, and there can be no exceptions. Um, and they should use a scanner. Um, so um, I've represented the owner in the past, her husband in the past, they're very responsible business people. And uh, they take this seriously, and I, and I had a long conversation with them about this, and I said there can be no exceptions. This can never, ever happen again. It's embarrassing to them, it's embarrassing to me, it's, and it's frustrating to you. So having said that, uh, and they've and they got to use that machine. I mean, it's not there for a paperweight. They, they've, they've, they've got to use that machine. They paid for it. They're expensive, so they've got to use it. So, I mean, will he answer any questions? We don't have any uh, dispute about the facts. Well, I, I can tell you that um, I, I've looked at the minutes from the previous meeting when... Uh, um, the same situation happened in the past, and basically the you know the remedy was to uh, get everybody to recertify everybody with tips, purchase a new scanner, place signs in the store stating that uh, everybody without an ID will not be served. That you'll also implement a new policy to card everybody who looks younger than 35, and the commission was assured that these license holders would never make such an error again. 
Well, they did some of those things. They did get they did get TIPS recertified, and they did get the scanner machine. And they do have that policy. They just got to implement, it and they just got to make sure they don't do it. I mean, and they they did take some steps, and they even discharged the former employee. Um, but you know, it's not good enough to hear excuses. I understand that. I mean, you know. It's well, hard for me to, to say all of this stuff, and I'm sure it's harder for you to listen to it. But um, they did they did make an effort, but they didn't implement it, and they've got to implement it, and there can be no exceptions. Well, I don't know how my, my fellow commissioners feel, but I'm inclined to to uh, to move to suspend the license for a period of time because I really feel that it's important for the license holders to have a responsibility to the community and serving alcohol to, to teenagers shows that they have a lack of responsibility for the community. And obviously, implementing all of these particular steps did not seem to dissuade them from serving people underage. So perhaps a week-long suspension would. And that's what I'm inclined to, to uh, recommend to my fellow commissioners and see what they think about it. I have to agree with my uh, fellow commissioner, only for the fact that this is the second time, and it's exactly what happened the first time didn't um, change in any way. And they were warned if this happened again, there, there would be a suspension. Um, I, I'm one that, and I'll speak for myself, I don't believe in um, costing someone their job. It always seems like the, the little guy gets let go because, um, you know, the owner's not paying attention, okay? It's the owner's responsibility. Um, you do, you hire the clerks, they tip, certified, but they should be on that 24-7. I mean, and I, I believe, and I could be wrong, I think they even have cameras in there. And if they were to watch, there shouldn't be any time that they don't, don't use that scanner, as was one of the reasons we approved the license there to begin with, that they would use it. So as far as letting a clerk go, I feel bad that they lost their job. I, I don't like to see that happen. I think that management has got to be more responsible and make sure, 100 percent sure, it doesn't happen. So I, I uh, being the same exact violation, the same exact wording, I have to agree with my commissioner. I think maybe we need a couple of days to think about where they're going and putting new procedures in place. All, all I would ask, if I could address the, 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 the penalty part of the, 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 this discussion, is that um, I would request that the seven-day suspension, three days be served, four days be suspended, and if they have any other incident within two or three years, that gets, add on, gets added on. Uh, I think they've gotten the message. I don't know, I mean, but I think they've gotten the message. If this doesn't give them the message, um, I don't know. But, but th I would ask your board to consider a partial suspension in other words, a suspension of seven days, three to be served, four to be held in abeyance. I don't know that anyone's mentioned seven days here. I did. Oh, I, did you? I, I'm I sorry. I didn't week. hear that. That's what I'm if, saying. If I'm a little confused. Uh, I'm well, he did. Okay. Uh, I'm, um... I was, I was looking at the precedent from a couple of years ago, and we, we, we settled on three days suspension um, with the probationary period of X, you know, two years, five years, whatever. Um, open to reducing that to a three-day suspension, effective uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, which is the busiest time, I believe, of buying liquor, but um, whatever that, you know, this Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And then if, uh, if another um, violation happens within the next two years, I'm open to a significant suspension of one month or more. So, you know, you know, slap the wrist a little bit, for, three-day suspension, but if it happens within the next couple of years, you know, we come down much harder. So that's kind of what I'm looking to do. I'll be honest, sir. The reason why I, I am pushing for a harder suspension is because you've never passed a test. You've been, had the license for, for since 2015. You've been tested twice and failed twice. <clears throat> and so that shows to me that they're not getting the message. Are those the only two stings within that period of time? I beg your pardon? I'm just asking a question. Were those the only two stings within that period of time? The, yes. only, the only two compliance tests within that period of time? I'm sorry? You said they I'm haven't passed sure. any other tests. Were these the only two compliance yes, those were the checks only within? Two tests that I'm aware of, yes, and they were not passed, right? right. 
There might have been one more. Yes. Pardon me? There might have been one more. There was one in 2016 and, and the, the recent one. So yeah. that would be two. Okay, because there was one there was, there was one violated that got caught twice in a row. So that would have been two. And this would be a third one? No, they've only been caught twice. Once in 2016 and once in 2017, correct? I think there was one time that they did pass. I they did pass. Was, yeah. was I'm a, sorry, I misspoke. You did pass one time. What was, was that? Well, there were three. But there were two, three. There were twice. That, there, was um, one, there, was one, there was one store that got caught twice in a row, and this is the third one. So, anyway, that's, that's my proposal. Three days like we did with the other one, and probationary, peer, probationary period for two years, where another violation, there'll be one month suspension which is pretty um, significant. Oh, you want to that is very that? significant a month. It, it, it is very significant. Well, um, it's not, it's not a would, difficult task to, it's, it, I can, it's not like you, you know, you're splitting the atom. It's pretty easy to cut everybody. It's either, you know, cut everybody or cut no one. So, so I think it's a simple thing to do to accomplish. So that's why I'm given the, these, these kind of, you know, you know these, these kind of violations. So. Anyway, that's where I stand. So is this, you, have, you made that in form of a motion? Exactly. That no, the no, next I'm just batting, I'm batting it around. Oh, I mean, you're I'm just batting open, it around. I'm I, I, I do agree with the three-day suspension, but they would need uh, a two-week notice, I believe. Yes. Um, so it would be. Okay. Am I correct? So uh, is the motion to, to suspend the license for three days? Um, weekend, a weekend. Uh, three three days, days during a weekend um, at a date at least two or three weeks out? Is that what we're talking about? Yes. Yes. Um, okay, well, so uh, that's what, I think that's the motion that's gonna be before us. And uh, is there any other well, debate? Well, no. I think the motion, um, yes, the motion would be a three-day suspension to be served within the next two, three weeks. Uh, the weekend would be Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Um, I forget what I was getting to. No, I don't, I don't yes, really okay. need it. What, uh, what dates would that, uh, would that be, Mac? Oh, it, okay, we can do 13th, 14th, and 15th. So that would be a suspension on the 13th, 14th, and 15th. And again, uh, on that motion, that should you appear before um, the next two years, as my colleague had said, there will certainly be a very stiff um, suspension. What the numbers would be, I don't know, but um, I'm sure it would be very stiff one within two years. So that's in the form okay, of the motion. Okay, that's the motion. Um, okay, so we're going to we're going to vote on a motion to suspend the license of Shuban Inc. DBA Parkway Convenience Store, 190A Revere Beach Parkway, for a period of three days, commencing October 13th, 14th, and 15th of 2017, for the offense of serving alcohol to an underage patron during a compliance check, second offense. And we would like to at this time notify the police department to, uh, so that they're notified that they will be shut down for those three days. Um, I, I, I'm not too sure on that. If they have to shut down or they still can use their common VIC license, will that go with the, um, does the common VIC go um, with the liquor license at the same time if they're suspended. They've just got the grocery store open. No common bit. Okay. So I guess they will be able to stay open, but um, I'm sure that they're going to have to make sure that everything is um, securely closed, that no one can buy, purchase any alcohol at that time. Thank you. I, um, I, I think that concludes the business for today. Excuse me, Count. Uh, we're going to go back to, no, I, I want to go.
Yes, that was a motion. I think it passed. I was just yes, I'm yes, explaining yes. something. But I think we have to go back to number one. I don't know how we want to handle oh, that. Yes. Okay. Thank you. And Uno's restaurant was notified of the hearing today. Can we uh, proceed without them here or? We can. Okay. Okay, so this application for Uno's Restaurant LLC DBA Uno Chicago Grill, uh, Joshua Wallace, manager for a transfer of stock relative to a change of ownership of the parent company. Uh, that is the application. Is there a motion to second this application? I'll second the motion. Um, I'll second the motion. Oh. The, the uh, motion is approved. The application for a transfer of stock from Uno's Restaurant LLC, Joshua Wallace Management, has been uh, approved. And is there, I would, Motion, motion to approve. When is our next scheduled meeting? Um, our next please. scheduled meeting would be <laughs> the 18th, Thursday. the anniversary. The 18th. <laughs> when is it? Like 30th anniversary. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Make a motion to, to make it. Uh, I think our next scheduled meeting is um, November 18th. October. 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 18th, uh, the third Wednesday. Okay, yes, yeah, so the next scheduled meeting will be October 18th at um, 3 p.m.